I have always discussed this from your end. For once let me explain it from the other end. From your end what I have always discussed is, in every role of your life ask yourself what is your primary responsibility. And in executing your secondary responsibility are you failing in your primary responsibility. For example, as a head of an organization, your primary responsibility is to provide a vision to the organization, to provide a direction to the organization in the context of today's mastermind, to ensure that you are able to observe and improve the process of an organization. In the context of one of the earlier masterminds, to ensure that not only you are operating of a very powerful subconscious mind, but the overall subconscious power of all the key decision makers in the organization has to be evolved so that collectively it's a powerful organization. Just imagine yours as an organization of people at the top, all of them with a very deep being and with great strength in their doing. What sort of an organization that you develop? These are all your primary responsibilities. Your secondary responsibilities may be that that there are certain doings in the organization which you must do. The Prime Minister of the country should focus on leading the entire country and should not be involved in party politics and uh, dealing with what opposition is saying and replying to the opposition, going counter. Then who administrates this country? So if sometimes there is stagnation in this country, it's because People in the chair who should be executing primary responsibilities, they don't execute the primary responsibilities. And your primary responsibility, if you don't execute, nobody else can. See, if you don't do the role of a CEO, a financial controller cannot do the role of a CEO. If the financial controller does not do the job of being a financial controller, the accountant cannot do the job of a financial controller. If the accountant is not doing the job that he is expected to do, the clerk can't do the job the accountant is supposed to do. So when you don't execute a primary responsibility, I know there is a lot of humor in mastermind, I know we laugh a lot, we enjoy a lot. With that the mastermind goes, but that's not my primary responsibility. My primary responsibility is providing clarity to you. So if masterminds, because I get carried away that all of you laugh, eventually becomes a mastermind where there is a lot of laughing in the mastermind. This becomes a replacement to any comedy drama that you can go. You can come to mastermind and all of you can laugh and go. And in the process I forget to teach what must be taught. Masterminds will disintegrate. If enlightenment can be provided with entertainment, that's a secondary responsibility. But the primary responsibility is enlightenment. As parents, if you are also focused only on the academics of children, the school is also focused only on the academics of the children, and in between all the tuition teachers are also only focused on the academic of the child, who does the character development of the child? So as parents, your primary responsibility becomes the character development of the child, the ethical development of the child, the moral development of the child, the attitudinal development of the child, the exposures you give to the child. The extracurricular activities that you get your child involved and the primary responsibility of the teachers at school or those educators who are taking tuition classes, their primary responsibility becomes academics. Then the child has an all-round development. But if we fail on that, then everybody focus on this. That's what I'm saying. If you do not execute your primary responsibility, nobody else can execute that primary responsibility. Secondary responsibility, if I don't execute, somebody else can execute. Secondary responsibility, even if I don't execute, there must be somebody else whose primary responsibility is that, so it gets executed. But those primary responsibilities of yours that are not executed, from your end, coming to a mastermind, your primary responsibility is learning. The moment you shift into making contacts, creating friends, discussing about everything else and somewhere you start liking mastermind because you can have breakfast after the mastermind together. Somewhere the entire purpose of mastermind becomes because you have your friends coming here, you enjoy your fellowship with all of them. 
Fraternizing becomes a great excitement for you. And every time you are able to develop new friends, if your primary responsibility of coming to a mastermind itself is so that I can get contacts and develop my business future, if your primary responsibility of coming to the mastermind itself shifts into thinking, by going to mastermind, I can feel close to Rajan. When you should actually be feeling close to the teachings of Alma Mater, then Rajan, you've lost the very purpose for which you come to a mastermind. And if learning and growing out of a mastermind, which is the primary responsibility, if that is compromised, whatever secondary and third and fourth responsibilities you are able to execute and gain out of a mastermind, you have lost on executing the fundamental responsibility which is learning out of a mastermind. And that cannot be replaced through any alternative source. So very big question. Again a question on leadership. Again a question on parenting. Again a question in leading yourself and the world. A very important question that we need to ask. Am I doing justice to my primary responsibility? In fact, first you should understand what is your primary responsibility. That is your very prime responsibility. <laughs> and having understood what is your prime responsibility, you need to answer this question. Am I doing justice to it? If you fail in your secondary responsibilities, that's not going to hurt you much. But if you fail in your primary responsibility, that hurts you a lot. Hurts you a lot. So each one of you have to ask this question. As a doctor, what is my responsibility? What is my primary responsibility? As a physiotherapist, what is my primary responsibility? I remember Dr. Deepak Arjundas once telling, every three weeks, the physiotherapist must be changed. I said, why? In three weeks, the patient and the physiotherapist become so close to each other. That the same physiotherapist who did not care when you said, Ah! She would have still pushed you. In three weeks by the relationship that is there and the emotion that is there when you say, Ah! He might start underplaying himself. And a physiotherapist who does not push you cannot treat you. So what is your primary responsibility? To be sensitive to the pain or for curing the source of pain which is causing all this. What is your primary responsibility? As an architect, what is your primary responsibility? To create a brilliant infrastructure or just to be somebody who has clout in CMDA? I know a lot of people succeed. That can be a second responsibility. Hey Rajan, I am succeeding in my primary responsibility as well as my secondary responsibility. Super. What is your primary responsibility? As a sales manager to make your sales team performers or to just befriend them at the end of the day and listen to all their worries and tensions and emotions and say, I understand. If you can also be a good friend to them, great. But that's secondary responsibility. Your primary responsibility is somebody who works with you should be a performer and you are responsible for their performance in the role of a leadership. That's your primary responsibility. What is my primary responsibility when I stand in front of the mic? In fact, what is my primary responsibility? Is it to you or to my extended audience? What is my primary responsibility? What is, my prim what is your primary responsibility? Is it dancing in top gear or experiencing the state of silence which comes after the dance? So if you come to top gear and all you cherish is dance, 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 but you do not fill yourself with the terminal experience that comes after the dance, then you are not even executing your primary responsibility as a seeker when you are there in top gear. All of us have to ask this question. Am I creating a very illusionary feeling of success by doing exceptionally well where I am not expected to be exceptionally well? And in the process, missing out on A Harbhajan Singh scores 100 but does not bowl properly. They won't keep him in the team because the primary responsibility of Harbhajan Singh is that he has to bowl well. Just because somewhere Suresh Raina is able to bowl and take a few wickets. But somehow he has a promise unto himself he will never bat properly. He will not be retained in the team. You can, a batsman can succeed as a bowler. 
But his primary responsibility is batting. A bowler can be an extraordinary fielder, but his primary responsibility is bowling. However well you field. Madhrinath may be a good fielder, but he is expected to do something more with the bat than just taking it inside and bringing it back. He doesn't want his bat to get dirty. No, you won't be retained in the team. You are not kept in the team, Yusuf Patan, because once in a way you might hit a six. A player who can score six singles in a over will be retained in the team over Yusuf Patan. What is your primary responsibility? Doesn't matter how much you succeed in your secondary and third and fourth and fifth and sixth and seventh and eighth. If you are not doing well in your primary responsibility, you are a failure. As a parent, as a teacher, as an organization leader, as a coach, as anybody. He is a gentleman cricketer. He is very sportive. He will walk if he gets out. All those credentials for Adam Gilchrist. Extraordinary. Everybody admired. Yet, every player who was ever asked to write a World 11, every player, both for test matches as well as one day matches, in all the World 11 that was ever written, if there was one player who was a constant in all the teams, it was Adam Gilchrist. Nobody has thought of anybody else as a wicketkeeper batsman. Because, one, he is a good wicketkeeper. Parthi Patel, ball pawn on the pagra. Okay. He feels that he should not hurt the ball. He leaves the ball and then picks it up and throws. Now, doesn't matter how you are able to bat. If you can't keep wickets, a wicketkeeper, that's your primary responsibility. Adam Gilchrist was extraordinary in his prime responsibility. He was a great wicketkeeper. He was extraordinary in his secondary responsibility, batting. He was extraordinary in his third responsibility which was he wanted to be a very good sportsman. Without a doubt he is there in every world level. What is your primary responsibility? And from the world perspective your son always expects you to be a father. Not a spiritual teacher, not a mentor, not a coach. A child wants a father. It will be easier for one of you to teach Ashtut than me teaching Ashtut because Ashtut primarily wants a father, not a teacher. What that son wants is, he should be able to share his vulnerability with me and he would expect me as a father to tell him, I understand Kanna, that's what he wants. He doesn't want me to tell him. In the third chapter of Bhagavad Gita, Ashrut, he says, he wants a father. I can be a teacher to all of you. I will never be able to be the teacher I wish I can be to Ashrut. I will not be able to be. That's a different thing. Some of these children grew up itself in not seeing a father in you. They saw a guru in you. Like the children of Lal Kudi Jairaman, some of them never saw a father in Lal Kudi Jairaman. From day one they only saw a guru. So, in fact, they don't they must be missing a fatherly figure in their life or they would have seen somebody else in the world. There must be a tata, there must be an uncle who is playing the role of a fatherly figure to them. Your son wanted a father. Because he knows that there are enough people in the world who can teach me meditation. There are enough people in the world who can come and teach me yoga. There are enough people in the world who can come and mentor me on what I should be. But Appa, nobody else can take the role of an Appa except you. I want you to be an Appa. That's what he wants. And when you don't do that, that shakes children up. To your children, it doesn't matter that you are an opinion maker in the society. It doesn't matter to them. I'll put it simply. That boy was never able to experience a father in the father of the nation. He almost felt he lost a father in the process of Mahatma Gandhi becoming the father of the nation. You might have been father of the nation, but you never played the role of a father to me. And that boy grew deprived of what it is to be developed by a father because Mahatma Gandhi somehow took his primary responsibility to be the father of the nation and forgot that's not what your son is proud about. He wanted a father. Why is that my relationship with my daughter not as good as it should be? 
because she sees you as some a lawmaker who is all the time talking about what is right what is wrong what to do what not to do why did you do that you should not have done this and the child wants beyond this i made this juice because you like it i bought this because i know you will like it i came home early to be with you who are your best friends so how much do they mean to you so what do you people discuss she is craving for a mother and she sees a lawmaker in the house who is all the time talking about do's and don'ts do's and don'ts do's and don'ts yes that's a secondary response in fact when you succeed in your primary responsibility the world does not mind accepting you in a secondary responsibility but when you do not succeed in your primary responsibility the world rejects you in its secondary responsibility if part of all the learning that we want from a mastermind along with that you also get a chance to laugh you'll you'll continue to enjoy the laughter but you will come here for learning the day mastermind becomes lot of laughing and hardly any learning somehow i get carried away by a lot of you and I, this is what i keep doing eventually you will find those people who came to you do not come to you anymore because the world does not accept you in a secondary responsibility unless you have succeeded in a primary responsibility you being a great friend to your team but not leading them to competence not demanding performance out of them not demanding success out of them but a great friend one of those friendly moments he'll tell you why he is resigning because he wants a boss who can make him a performer he wants a leader who can make him perform somewhere in the entire process you stop pushing your people and it is your ability to push people that corrected their bodily ailments and that is what you could do as a physiotherapist and it came to a point where you become very friendly to them they'll see a very good friend in you and they'll hire a new physiotherapist you just cannot expect to succeed in your secondary and third and fourth responsibilities unless you are first a success in your primary responsibility two parts one from your end to the world you should identify in every role of your life what is your primary responsibility i know a lot of people make this mistake even in their relationship with the transcendental force your primary responsibility with god is your faith your surrender your bhakti your devotion and then in turn you can do something for the temple in turn you can do something for that idol in turn you can donate something to it that second responsibility you taking care of god is secondary responsibility you taking care of a place of worship is secondary responsibility your primary responsibility is ensuring that you share a relationship with that place where you seek to be taken care but what happens after some time because your name is given your flag is hoisted your name comes there and they make you powerful and they give you a lot of this thing and you know you can use this power to take a lot of your friends and relatives to the place of worship somewhere you go there and you enjoy your power your position your influence in the temple and in the entire process you forget to be a devotee you just forget to be a devotee in fact the hand gets so busy shaking hands with everybody it forgets to bow down holding it together in fact the respect that they have for you in this temple because of the way you support the temple is so much so many people fall at your feet ayya vandirkar ayya vandirkar you forget to prostrate in front of god somewhere you have converted that also into a place of status you have failed yourself in your primary responsibility i have no doubt from the day i started alma mater today my primary responsibility towards you is one of an almanite everything else comes later i tell all these guys who are part of the organization i don't care how you perform what you do but when i see you are not living your life as an almanite dukta it hurts my primary responsibility in this forum to a sucharita my wife to the rajan my father to ranganathan my father in law is that they are an almanite all these relationships in this forum come secondary of course when i go home i don't discuss alma mater if there is one person who never speaks alma mater at home it's raj in fact if there is one person who never speaks alma mater with you it's raj i will never speak alma mater with you out there is a place for this there is a place to learn there is a place to grow 
outside i'll ask you how is your daughter how is your father how is your health how is your business how are you doing happy loving that's all i want i want to know about you i don't want to play a teacher outside and i don't want to play anything else inside that is why i'm telling you in fact a lot of almanites lose the entire plot because they think coming to alma mater the primary responsibility is to get close to rajan that is secondary responsibility third responsibility fourth responsibility nth responsibility primary responsibility is your transformation don't walk inside my world with any other desire than your personal transformation that's your personal primary responsibility and in all that yes i love to be close to you i love to friend you i love to have time with you i love to have those moments yeah i had those moments i have had your pani puri moments i have had your ice cream moments i have had nariyal pami moments i in fact i forcefully took all my architects in a tractor one day i told them have you ever gone on a tractor no you should know how to go on a tractor come on and you have to stand and come yeah these are all games there has never been a top gear where i failed to come back from top gear take aditya in one of those trolleys in the airport and take him for one round he can't come to top gear for that sake and i can't take him to top gear for that sake he has to come to top gear for a spiritual transformation that's my primary response everything else comes later even when i keep referring to you you are all my children that is secondary responsibility primary responsibility is to one that of an almanite are you growing at the rate at which you are supposed to be growing are you living your life that you deserve to live everything comes later so many of you see a fatherly role in me i really cherish it but i would consider myself a failure in that fatherly role if i'm not able to play the role of a teacher to you because you and me came together on a primary relationship you as a seeker and me as a teacher and everything else came later great initiator webcast one of the best decisions that has been taken in 16 and a half years great initiator webcast but if webcast is going to happen at the cost of disturbing the flow of the mastermind i don't think i'll encourage it to even happen because the primary responsibility is to you and a flow that flows out of that whole thing thanks to technology is webcast but the primary responsibility is the sanctum of what is happening here must be preserved you have to ask yourself this question am i a success in my primary responsibility am i doing justice to my primary responsibility what is my primary responsibility and you cannot compensate with secondary success for a failure in your primary responsibility two in my relationship with the world what do they see in that relationship as my primary responsibility the son is seeking a father the mother is seeking a daughter the daughter wants to be mothered she some of feels some of the experiences which you can give as a mother you alone can give and all those adolescent stupids what your mother can experience with you she can only experience with you that cannot be replaced by anybody else in trying to be a great friend don't fail to be a great daughter in trying to be a great friend to your friends do not forget to be a great son to your parents no i have appointed a nurse excellent my mother is lying down i have appointed a nurse and the nurse will take for a nurse taking care of the patient is primary responsibility as a son as a daughter is it not your primary responsibility to go and sit beside them for some time and invest that time and give them that feeling of a parent child relationship nurse can give the injection nurse can give the medicines nurse can give the care nurse can do everything a nurse can do and yet a nurse cannot do what a son can do what a daughter can do the nurse cannot do only you have to do the driver can take the children every day to school the office manager can go and pay the fees in the school and come but nobody else can take the role of you being there in a school day function when your child is performing and that cannot be delegated i don't care how busy you are how successful you are in the mind of the child it's a let down that my father does not attend my school day functions 
my mother doesn't have time to come to my school day functions and that primary responsibility cannot be replaced but I have done so much for my children and yet they say I don't love them somewhere primarily what they expected from you was not executed so much I am doing for my team so much I am doing for my organization and why are they still dissatisfied with my leadership somewhere in their eyes you have failed in a primary responsibility and without that being corrected nothing can be corrected Chidambaram can give good speeches Chidambaram can give great speeches Chidambaram can be Harvard Chidambaram can be traditional Chidambaram can be everything but if the security of the nation is not taken care you have failed as a home minister who needs your speeches if as a finance minister you could reform the country much more than what you are able to do as a prime minister extraordinary man clean man absolutely clean one of the cleanest prime ministers we can ask for but what's your primary responsibility leadership a nation of billion people have to be led forward and the world will ask you questions if primary responsibilities are a failure so one ask yourself what are your primary responsibilities have clarity on this are you succeeding in some secondary responsibilities and creating an artificial fulfillment in your primary responsibility no wonder the world still sees you not as a success in the relationship I share with the world by doing a lot of secondary and third and fourth fulfillment for the people am I crestfallen right now am I so hurt after doing so much why they are not able to see me the way they should have seen me a lot of single parents go through this challenge where in trying to make up for the father who is in there or in trying to make up for the mother who is in there sometimes you lose out on being the father you are supposed to be because my children don't have a mother I know I have to play the role of a father and a mother to them especially those of you who have chosen to remain single but so much you think the child will miss a mother so so much you try to play the role of a mother to the child so that the child does not go through the deprivation of a mother and yet you wonder why your child is sometimes so antagonizing and rebellious towards you in so much trying to play the role of making up for a father who is not there because you have chosen to remain single and so much you try to play the role of a father to them but they miss a mother also in the process you be a mother a complete mother and also try to be a father your children will cherish you you be a father and also try to be a mother your children cherish you but when you compromise on what you are primarily supposed to be and doesn't matter how exceptional you are on your secondary and third responsibilities you'll still find only a gap between you and your client between you and your children between you and your organization between you and your management between you and your partner partnerships break when one of them is failing in his primary responsibility but arguing because I am good in my secondary responsibility you should not mind that I am not good at my primary responsibility that's when the entire disintegration takes place think about it close your eyes and be with yourself